Good morning class. I am your teacher for today's discussion. Our topic for today is all about facilities and equipment in volleyball. But before we start our formal discussion, let us first have our class objectives. Let me read our class objective. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to A. Recognize the facilities and equipment in volleyball. B. Discuss the facilities and equipment in volleyball. And C. Make a graph about facilities and equipment using a T-chart. So now, let us have our formal discussion. Again, our topic for today is all about facilities and equipment in volleyball. So there are three categories in facilities and equipment in volleyball, which are playing area, net pause, and balls. So let us first discuss our playing area. What is playing area of volleyball? The playing area includes the playing court and the free zone. It shall be rectangular and symmetrical. In every volleyball, there is always a playing area. There is always a formal or a standard playing area. Next, under the playing area, there is a dimension. The playing court is a rectangular measuring 18 by 9 meters surrounded by a free zone which is a minimum of 3 meters wide on all sides. The free playing space is the space above the playing area which is free from any obstructions. The free playing space shall measure a minimum of 7 meters in height from the playing surface. Next, let's discuss the playing surface of volleyball. Playing surface. The surface must be flat, horizontal, and uniform. It must not present any danger of injury to the players. It is forbidden to play on rough or slippery surfaces. On indoor courts, the surface of the playing court must be of a light color, while in an outdoor courts, a slope of 5 mm per meter is allowed for drainage. Court lines made of solid materials are prohibited or forbidden. So, in playing surface, let us consider the, the safety and the protocols that we need to implement while playing the game. Next, one of the composition of playing area is the lines of the court. So, all lines are 5 cm wide. They must be of a light color which is different from the color of the floor and from any other lines. So, the line of the court must be separate from any other co color of a line to avoid confusion. Under the line of the court is the boundary lines. Two lines and two end lines mark the playing court. Both side lines and end lines are drawn inside the dimension of the playing court. Next is the center line. The axis of the center line divides the playing court into two equal courts measuring 9 by 9 meters each. However, the interline width of the line is considered to belong to both courts equally. This line extends beneath the net and from sideline to sideline. The last line is a top line. On each court, an attack line whose rear edge is drawn 3 meters back from the axis of the center line marks the front zone. So that is the attack line. So our zones and areas. First, let's have the front zones. On each court, the front zone is limited by the axis of the center line and the rear edge of the attack line. The front zone is considered to extend beyond the side lines to the end of the free zone. Next, the service zone. The service zone is a 9 meters wide area behind each end line. It is laterally limited by two short lines. Each 15 cm long drawn 20 cm behind the end lines as an extension of the side lines, both short lines are included in the width of the services zone. In depth, the service zone extends to the end of the free zone. Next, the substitution zone. 
The substitution zone is limited by the extension of both attack lines up to the scorer's table. So next is the libero replacement zone. The libero replacement zone is part of the free zone on the side of the team benches. Limited by the extension of the, the attack line up to the end line. Next area is warm up area. The warm up areas, size approximately 3 by 3 meters, are located in both of the bench side corners outside this free zone. Next is the penalty area. A penalty area, size approximately 1 by 1 meter and equipped with 2 chairs is located in the control area outside the prolo prolongation of each end line, they must be limited by a 5 cm wide red line. Let's move on to the another facilities and equipment in volleyball, which is the net and post. So, first topic is the height of the net. Placed vertically over the center line, there is a net whose top is set at the height of 2.43 meters for men and 2.24 meters for women. Its height is measured from the center of the playing court. The net heights over the two sidelines must be exactly the same as must not exceed the official heights by more than 2 centimeters. So the next is the structure of the playing area. The net is 1 meter wide and 9.50 to 10 meters long with 25 to 50 centimeters on each side of the side bands made of 10 centimeter square black mesh. Next, under the net and post is the side bands. Two white bands are fastened vertically to the net and placed directly above each side line. They are 5 cm wide and 1 meter long and are considered as a part of the net. So next is the antenna of volleyball. An antenna is a flexible rod with 1.80 meter long and 10 mm in diameter, made of a fiberglass or a similar material. Next is the pause. The paws supporting the net are placed at the distance of 0 0.50 to 1 meter outside the sidelines. They are 2.55 meters high and preferably adjustable. The paws are rounded and smooth fixed to the ground without wires. There shall be no dangerous or obstructing devices. The under the facilities and equipment in volleyball is the balls. So what is the standard? ball in volleyball. The ball shall, shall be spherical made of a flexible leather or synthetic leather case with a bladder inside made of rubber or a similar material. Its color may be a uniform light color or a combination of color. The last topic is the uniformity of a ball. What is uniformity of the ball? Uniformity of the ball, all balls used in the match must have the same standards regarding circumference, weight, pressure, types, color, or etc. That's all for today's discussion. Did you understand about facilities and equipments in volleyball class? Do you have any questions from our discussions? Okay, good. Now, let's proceed to our activity.